गुड मॉर्निंग निधि सच अ प्लेजर टू मीट यू टुडे फ्रॉम द आई एम टी गाजाबाद टू थाउजेंड फोर टू थाउजेंड सिक्स बैच थैंक्स सो मच फॉर मेकिंग द टाइम वी ऑब्वियसली इंटरेक्टेड अ फ्यू मे बी अ मंथ बैक एट वन ऑफ द समिट्स सो थैंक्स सो मच फॉर मेकिंग द टाइम थॉट वील हैव अ बिट ऑफ अ कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड टॉक अबाउट लेट्स से यू नो इनिशियली योर योर जर्नी योर 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 करियर जर्नी पोस्ट टू थाउजेंड सिक्स आई थिंक जे पी मॉर्गन इज वे यू गॉट प्लेस्ड फ्रॉम कैंपस and then there after now you're at natfest so tell us a little bit about it first of all thank you so much for having me here it's really exciting to talk about imt and relive some of the days where it all started so i as you said like i started uh, with jp morgan in mumbai uh, into investment banking i spent about 5 plus years uh, in different roles uh, essentially handling uh, equity capital markets and mergers and acquisitions So coming from a business class background finance was always my calling and numbers intrigued me um but uh, because i had age and time on my mind or on my hand i thought that uh, i wanted to explore which i was something which i was passionate about as well so that's where after jp morgan i went to hsbc for investment banking and post that i decided to go um you know uh, with a smaller company and just learn a little more um that was with uh, india can which is a 50 50 jv between uh, educomp and pearson plc right. so they were doing a lot of great work on the vocational education bit and i thought that i should kind of you know um add uh, whatever i bring on the table to the company uh but i realized that education in india needs a lot of work in terms of uh, because it's it's one of the purely the only sector which needs very close uh, work between the government bodies the private sector as well as a policy and framework so it's not easy to scale at the pace which you expect it and given the rising population and given you know um, the, the shortage of books and the public funds i think that was something which uh, i couldn't scale at the level which i thought i could make an impact on and because you know finance was also always something which was white calling i went back into an amazing company called market um that's when i uh, which was a fintech so that was a time uh, where anything and everything had to have a prefix or a suffix as tech right so i saw like business technology transforming businesses and i thought that it's the best time for me to kind of ride on that bus and that uh, market became ihs market it was a merger and now it is snp global so mm-hmm. i spent good 8 10 transformation years i think in that organization learned a lot about fintech um about how technology will be pivotal uh, you know for years to come and very recently i moved to natwest uh, mm-hmm. this is my third stint now into banking again mm-hmm. and this time it's with a new flavor because i've joined the retail banking team right. so i think overall if i look back i think these 16 17 years have been a steep learning curve for me and um, seen a lot of things change and transform so yeah absolutely i think <clears throat> you've done well and look you coming back to market i mean the first time i heard about market was possibly in london about 15 odd years back when one of the students there he said i've been recruited at market so that's when i got to know yes they've done some amazing work um so you've been in and out of finance you know in yes. the in the last 16 17 years and obviously you've um evolved one other thing that uh, uh, listening to you and talking to you and you know also reading about you was that you're someone who's obviously quite uh, passionate about diversity and inclusion uh and you know what do you think india is currently doing as far as diversity and inclusion is concerned i'm talking about the corporate world yes no i think uh, this is a uh, a very important topic more so for recent times diversity is not new to me um so i come from a small town uh, and when i moved uh, to srcc i joined srcc where you know you have students from across india and across the world so my trust with diversity started then and i realized that that added a lot of layers to my personality you know i was very open i was curious and i learned a lot um you know and uh, uh, that's where i thought that you know let me kind of uh, take a step ahead and kind of also take this learning into the corporate world and i've been fortunate to be part of such organization who've been like front runners in this space so be jp morgan hs bc or market you know i i remember ihs market was the first one which launched a six month maternity 
you know, which was kind of a front runner in this space. And now with NatWest, I think they also give like a six month, of, uh, you know, paternal leave. So, I mean, these are some cutting edge work. Um, it's about being inclusive. It's not about, uh, you know, only women diversity. It's about spreading it over and beyond about PWT, disability, now I'm very closely working with the LGBTQ, uh, you know, community and I've come to terms with what are the challenges, how marginalized that community is. So definitely the degree of diverse, the degree of conversations have changed, but I'm, I'm really excited about that now these conversations which were never part of middle class homes, like our families would never sit and talk about non-binary. Mm -hmm. you know, colleagues, for example. But my daughter is very comfortable talking about those. So I'm really excited that, you know, and at the corporate world as, uh, as well, I think, you know, people have now taking, started taking collective responsibility that unless and until you're inclusive, you have equity, you bring equity on the table, you would not no longer be an employer of choice. You know, so uh, that's what mm -hmm. I feel, you know, it's like it has to be imbibed into the culture and it is more so for us as future leaders to just have these open conversations. Absolutely. I think, you know, once you have those conversations in different corridors, I mean, that's when a lot of things could possibly get done. And you're also right that, you know, there is something called diversity and there's something called inclusion. And it's a much more broad base than possibly, let's say, just gender, gender yes. diversity. Um, so, you know, um, congratulations. I think you're doing some amazing work uh, over there. Tell us about your IMT days, you know, 2004, 2006. Um, you know, everybody talks about you know, some fond memories of IMT, Ghazibad when they were there. What are yours? I have some great memories. So as I said, I was a studious kid and uh, my SRCC lineage would kind of stamp into that. But once I moved into IMT, um, reality stuck. I mean, uh, okay. uh, in the sense that A, I realized that how you could uh, uh, you know, uh, could you could sit with competition yet learn from it, mm -hmm. you know, so it was really something like what you need to survive in this corporate world. You know, right now you were a student, but now you had become a learner is what I felt and all the rigorous hours you spent, you know, working on presentations, learning leadership, situational leadership, um, you know, learning about collaboration um, and about time management, timelines, pressure, I think it just added and helped me personally build a lot of confidence in me. Right. I thought that I was future ready and I can tell you that the first year I continued my student tag and uh, I was just focused on books and but the second year I realized that I could get a lot more from IMT you know and I'm so fortunate I got so I have some amazing memories from my B school. What's this about your 9 CGPA? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, as I said, I had to live up to the SRCC tag. Uh, so, um, you know, the first year, I thought that it was very obvious for me to kind of, um, you know, it was like part of the curriculum which I had at SRCC. I came from that background. Um, so, you know, it was just natural for me to kind of work hard. And But then I realized that instead of working hard, I have to work smart. So I have to add different facets to my personality. There is much more I need to learn about how to give presentations, how to give group discussions and you're not only, you're much beyond your grades, you're much beyond your intellect and that's how I see, I mean today, in today's world I think, uh, you know, there is no, there is like the lines have completely blurred between a, a topper and, and that's how, you know, that's how our grade system has also evolved, mm -hmm. right? So all in all, I think uh, it's the exposure. Um, and it's the, the peers that I interacted with and the friends I made, I think, make it for a lovable memory. Yeah. So talking about friends, um, are you in touch with your batchmates? Yes, a lot of them, yeah, mm -hmm. and they've been like doing exceptionally well in their careers and I think I get a lot of motivation and strength, yeah. Okay, <laughs> nice. And what are some of those learnings that you, in a way, um, immersed in, you know, in your two years at IMT? Um, what are those, some of those learnings or um, skill sets that you still depend on a great deal. Uh, are there a few things from, you know, those 16, 17 years back? Absolutely. Um, so Dr. Talwar, I think, you know, the basic ingredients of what you are and what you need to make it in life don't change. So you have to be curious, you have to be open, you have to have a learner mindset. Right. I think these things do not change. Yes, definitely the ecosystem around you changes. So when I moved from, let's say, SRCC or from my hometown to SRCC to IMT, I think, you know, I had a very different ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And 
some of the learnings which I still you know take forward is as I said like you know just just learn about your mojo like what do you want to do and just take out the maximum from the situation you know so that's what I continue to do so I'm at IMT whatever I wanted to achieve out of it I would say I did that cent for cent um, and uh, of course things have changed and things have evolved and they'll continue to do so and you have to kind of refine that but I think the basics always remain the same right now, um, for some reason, I mean, uh, I believe you were called the group um, group discussion champion. <laughs> uh, why is that tag? So, um, so this has been my personal motto in life that whatever scares me, I just take it head on. Right. So I was not a public speaker till then. I came from a, a traditional conservative business class background where uh, though it was never about gender bias, but generally you didn't, did not have enough opportunities to speak up. And so when I got into IMT, and, and it's only the second year to start understanding the stakes are very high, right? And that's when I started realizing that I need to invest in myself and, and it is only there, this and now, right? So I kind of would raise my hand for every presentation that, you know, I want to be, you know, and, and it just helped me kind of over, overcome my fears. Right. And by the end of it, I didn't even realize I kind of championed my own potential, you know, so... I think that's how it evolved, but I think I'm proud of it. <laughs> so I think it's an interesting point you make about you know overcoming your fears or you know, <clears throat> certain uncertainties that you might uh, be thinking about. Um, I would imagine, especially in a very diverse base of um, you know, students, let's say at an IMT Gazibad, so a very diverse base of students. Um, I'm not just talking about gender, but I'm also talking about you know the kind of um, undergraduate degrees possibly they come from, yes. the kind of work experience they've done, the kind of um, regions they may have come from. Um, they all come in with their own set of questions in their mind. Uh, what advice would you give them? You know, they're coming in, um, you know, looking at those two next two years to then be able to evolve career-wise. Are there any um, takeaways that you might want to give them? So any advice to these students who have who come in with a lot of ambition and aspiration, but at the same time are also having certain questions or thoughts in the mind. Can I do it? Any thoughts that you might have? So I think the interesting point that you made is about diversity. So I think one is that in today's time, the ecosystem has changed significantly. And I, when I say significantly, it's like on the positive side. You know, you're no longer sitting in a cocoon, having a defined set of, uh, you know, uh, learnings that you can achieve, right? So even we had like two doctors in our batch, we mm -hmm. had people with 10 years plus of experience in our batch. And I can tell you from my personal experience, it, it was a great advantage to us. Right. And I'm sure the same would be for them because we could, the freshers could bring in new perspectives like a rawness into, you know, what's changing. So for example, now even in, in, in an organization, um, when we sit together and let's say work on a strategy paper, we would definitely include a couple of new grads, you know, because th they are very well read. They are the future leaders, right? So what would interest them in decades to come is something that the company should invest in. So I think they should just keep an open mind. They should be intrigued, intrigued enough to, you know, learn about, you know, and of course, you know, there are two kind of people, I think. One is which I feel in this generation because I interact with a lot of grads, people who know their mojo, they know their strengths and they're very clear about what path they want to take and I must congratulate them because I was very unclear. Right. And the others are who carve out their path, you know, they, they just walk the, walk the journey and they just figure it out, you know, I'm the second one, right? And uh, I believe there is merit, it's not that one is above the other and there is opportunity for all, but I think in today's ecosystem, the opportunities have just become manifold, right. um, you know, and th that's really exciting. Even for a person like me, you know, I think the opportunities are immense. So if I talk purely about fintech, for example, so you would generally see like in my mind when I started, tech was purely if you're an engineer, you take tech, you know, MC is for you, you know, you either go uh, PGDBM or you go MCA, right? Mm -hmm. But now when I hire for fintech for within NatWest, you know, you have principal engineers hired for coding, you have PMO officers where you also have chartered accountants, then you would also have scrum masters, you would also need product strategy people who decide the go-to market right. strategy. So I think even the, in that tech space, you would find a fit for every kind of a profile. Right. So I think, you know, you can change the path anytime and any, any time you want, just that you have to focus on the learning. It's 
It's a good point. I think opportunities are immense. Um, and uh, the fact that do you really need to be um, in the know about exactly where you're going? Not necessarily. As long as over a period of time you find the right mentors, you find the right guides, you write the, uh, find the right peer group to be able to shape the direction as you go forward. So I think that's a very interesting point. Uh, what's next for you? For me, I mean, I am really enjoying everything tech and at times I think and introspect why I did not pursue engineering, to be very honest. <laughs> um, so, you know, because I feel that, um, you know, I think for me, um, the next step would be definitely, uh, you know, an evolution of my current role, which is more on the COO, CXO kind of a setup, right. wherein, you know, you, uh, where you get un an understanding of how the businesses operate. But you also, at the end, need to understand the tech, the product, the business side of things to be able to action those strategic steps. Right. So I think I'm in a very good space. Um, I'm a learner for life and I'm very open. And my only two cents for everyone would be just to be open, find your mojo and just play along. I mean, there's, there's too much on offer. No, absolutely. I think, um, um, you know, you've, in these 16, 17 years, you've come a long way. Uh, you've been part of a few industries within finance and outside. There's a lot of experience you've gained. There's a lot of um, uh, opportunities that you capitalized on. Um, that's what makes you, uh, you know, Miss Nidhi Sethi as, as you are right now. So thanks so much for making the time. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you and look forward to speaking to you again. Likewise and anything if I can help with, you know, interacting with the students, I think it will be my privilege to give anything back to my alma mater. So Absolutely. Thank you so thanks much. so much for that. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.